Welcome to the Jet Setter Show, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. Enjoy and learn from a variety of experts on topics ranging from upscale travel at wholesale prices to retiring overseas, to global real estate and business opportunities, to tax havens and expatriate opportunities. You'll get great ideas on unique cultures, causes, and cruise vacations. Whether you're wealthy or just want to live a wealthy lifestyle, The Jet Setter Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to The Jet Setter Show. This is Jason Hartman, your host, where we explore lifestyle-friendly destinations worldwide. I think you'll enjoy the interview we have for you today, and we will be back with that in less than 60 seconds here on The Jet Setter Show. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn how to finance your next big real estate deal, there's a show for that. If you want to learn more about food storage and the best way to keep those onions from smelling up everything else, there's a show for that. If you honestly want to know more about business ethics, there's a show for that. And if you just want to get away from it all and need to know something about world travel, there's even a show for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from jasonhartman.com or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. It's my pleasure to welcome Shannon Enette to the show. She is an expert on being an expat. Shannon, welcome. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. I am currently in Costa Rica, actually. Ah. I am uh, in a, a tiny town. It's called Playa de Juco, and it's on the central Pacific coast. And it sounds like you have a reasonable Skype and internet connection, which, as we, as we discussed off air, in, in Costa Rica and and some of the other uh, Latin American places, it's not so easy to get that, is it? <laughs> no, it's definitely not. And the more uh, the more you want to get off the off the grid, you really do leave the internet as well. <laughs> but one of the things I find is that if you can have a good fast internet connection, you can get your work done a lot more quickly, or or your just your communications and being in touch with friends and family and so forth where you like the grid. So uh, so that's catch-22, isn't it? It really is. As long as you can find a place with a decent infrastructure um, and actual hardline cable, then I'm a happy camper. And I can I feel like you can still get away from the crazy, you know, around, around the corner. There's always those havens. Sure, sure. Well, I want to ask you for, you know, some of your, your favorite tips and ideas. You do a lot of work helping expats live on uh, very cost-effectively. And give us some of those tips, if you would. Absolutely. My pleasure. One thing that I learned right off the bat when I moved to Costa Rica about two years ago was uh, fees really add up, banking fees. I was with one of the large banks in the U.S., and I noticed every time I'm withdrawing, I kept my money there. I didn't bring it all in Costa Rica. And so every time I withdrew money from the ATM, I'm I'm getting hit with an ATM fee and a currency transaction fee if I didn't pull out uh, dollars, which you can do, but I prefer to pull out local currency. And I found a solution to this after some research. Um, My solution was Charles Schwab. They have a high yield uh, checking investor account that charges you zero fees. It's it's an impressive account, I, and I don't get anything from them. I just, besides uh, being fee-free, which is great, saves me about $260 every few months is what I had calculated, and I get n- no currency transaction charges. I receive no ATM fees from them, and then they go one step above and beyond and actually refund ATM fees from those banks that I'm withdrawing my money from. At the end of each month, I get those refunded back to me. So it's a phenomenal program, no minimum fees. It's just sort of a win-win all around. So Schwab for banking, you know, Mm -hmm. we started off kind of uh, half joking about the internet problems. Do you want to give any other tips on getting a decent internet connection? I I know that's got to be pretty spotty. I, I can hardly wait until the day comes when we have fast global internet. <laughs> That'll be so convenient. Yeah, I mean, Google's fiberhood, you know, just gets me tickled and excited because I am a gadget, uh, a gadget freak. I'm an Apple gadget person. But as far as internet connectivity here, 
the only way to have reliable, good internet is going with one of the major providers in a larger town. And you can't usually be up in the mountains unless you're in a big hub like San Jose or San Ramon or, you know, one of these established neighborhoods. If you want to be on the road from Dominical to San Ysidro, which is gorgeous and jungle filled, you're just not going to have steady internet. So it would really have to pick your place of corresponding uh, that has corresponding cable. Um, Cabletica is great, and and Ise is a new is is the government electrical company. They actually have delved into the internet provider uh, services as well, and so far they've done a pretty good job. And so that in you know really involves only when you're deciding on a place to live. It doesn't help in terms of traveling and hunting for that place to live. Do you do you have any advice there? That may be a tougher question. I know. Well. I- there, you know, as you well know, there's expat forums everywhere. And so if you are exploring an area to, to do work from, find out if there's good internet connectivity by going to all those forums and, and asking. It usually, if it's, a, if it's a hub, if it's a tourist destination, there's ample internet, at least in Costa Rica, that's the case. Um, if, you're, if you're going away, you know, Uvita, different places that really are, are off the beaten tourist circuit, then you're, you're hit or miss regarding internet. Most hotels and hostels are providing internet these days, but you still have to deal with power, power outages, which are absolutely un, you know, predictable. Nature is going to come whenever it wants. And, um, you know, you need to, be, need to be prepared. Another tip I usually offer out is to make sure you have a power surge because those lightning storms here You mean are a, surge, amazing. a surge protector? Yes, a surge protector, because the lightning storms are, are gorgeous and amazing, and they will fry your computer or fridge or anything else. Wow, yeah, yeah. It, it, any any uh, advice on a surge protector, like what kind of size you need, or, uh, you know, are there any good small travel versions that you want to recommend or anything? I have a, a travel size surge protector on my website at becominganexpat.com. I have a store um, button on the homepage there, and I have one I recommend just because of its size. Um, however, there also um, are, are protectors that, in addition to protecting from surges, they have a in-house battery so that when the power goes out, if you're working on a, on a traditional desktop computer, you don't lose all the work you just did and you have an hour warning to save and complete before that battery wears out. That's another nice solution. Yeah, yeah, it is. But hopefully you're not using a desktop computer because that limits your experience. <laughs> you can uh, take your laptop with you and travel around and uh, it's, it's very convenient. Good. Well, oh, absolutely. Um, uh, what, what other tips would you mention? You know, we probably want to talk about how to find a place, how to rent a place. A lot of the great infrastructure we have here in the States in terms of Zillow, Trulia, uh, all these great mm-hmm. rental websites and and maybe rule of law, an MLS system. Right, right. There, there are just all sorts of things we just take for granted, like breathing the air. We don't notice them really, unless, of course, we're in China. Then you do see the air, but uh, <laughs> not mm-hmm. in a good way. What, what, what advice do you have there? Well, you know, Costa Rica is like the U.S., except for you, you go in the past about 10 to 15 years on average. And so while you have numerous resources in the States, you've got to go back to your roots and start talking to people in Costa Rica. That is the best way. Now, it does depend on your goal, whether you're looking for an Americanized high-end property to rent or buy, or whether you're looking for a Tico-styled home or economic vacation rental. If you're looking for high-end, then you can still stay online and look at FlipKey and different vacation rentals, if that's if you're looking short term. And if you're looking for longer term, then any real estate office uh, or many of them offer vacation rentals, long term rentals, and, and they have their ear to the ground of what's available in their area. I recommend because I usually focus on the people who have more of a, a constricted budget. So I recommend actually exploring, doing an exploratory tour of Costa Rica, seeing the areas you like, deciding what climate you like, and, and infrastructure, and if healthcare is important, making sure you're near the hospitals you need to be in. Once you find the area you like, then um, in addition to driving the area, looking for science, because a lot of Ticos, that's all they do. And Tico is, is what a Costa Rican is called, just a, a little bit of a slang, and that's what they're, just to anyone else. Yeah, but... And, 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 and well, you, know, you, you want to make the distinction, too, that you're not just talking about Costa Rica because your company publishes guidebooks on expatriation in several countries, including Brazil, Ecuador, and some others, right? 
Right. Yep. Thailand, Panama, New Zealand are all coming up this next year. So um, the reason I was focusing on, on Costa Rica is that's the one that's out and available right now. The other ones are currently being constructed and, and we have the most information because it's complete. So, you know, that's I'm, I'm coming to you with that information. But it, it's interesting because you can't just go to Craigslist. I mean, there are some ads on Craigslist and that's that's a good starting point. But talking to people in town, talking to real estate agents and looking for signs are really the best way to secure housing. Well, what else would you like people to know, uh, you know, about about looking for a place? And, and, and you know, would you define short and long term? I, I mean, I think everybody knows what long term is. It's probably a year or more. But what is short term? Mm-hmm. Is it mean, you know, if you want to live there a month, uh, a week, uh, Airbnb type concept or, or, or what? The, the, bit, the big price jump occurs when you leave the week and you launch into months, even starting at one month. You can pay for one month and let's say the property is 800 a month. For that same property, you might pay 700 a week. The price is incredibly increased just due to turnover and you know the, the property manager's time or um, inconvenience. I'm not really sure. It's just how it works down here. Um, so if you can get a work a week off or I'm sorry, a month off from your work to come down and, and check it out, maybe to explore it before you, you make the jump to actually move down here. Try to make it at least a month because it's drastically cheaper to rent by the month. Right. And you could stay for three weeks and uh, and just leave that extra week on the table and yeah. you'd still be better off, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Good stuff. Anything people should know about their dealings and you know, not getting ripped off. Any any advice there? In general, I would say that, you know, Latin America, you have to worry about people trying to be con men, right? Same thing in the U.S. Now, in Costa Rica, out of all, I've been to, I think, uh, 19 Latin American countries, and out of co- all of them, Costa Rica, I found the least amount of people approach me, any type of thing that I feel is um, less than, you know, 50-50. I have not had any personal problem with that. Now, you never want to give people money without any without any follow through. Like for for rent, I have been to a place and seen it with my own eyes and seen and seen the person who owns the home and then I've secured a deposit, you know, and I get a receipt for that and that's okay, but paying out for 6 months rent, you know, without even seeing the place. People do this a lot online because they do just they want really? to have the security. They really do. They, <laughs> they want the security of knowing they have a place to be, but you haven't seen that's it. So you dumb. don't know what really yeah, I just don't recommend that. Wait till you get here, you know, have a hotel for for a few days. And that I feel like that's really the best way to avoid getting ripped off. Yeah, most certainly, most certainly, uh, you know, seemingly obvious advice, but maybe not always so obvious. So are you planning to go and live anywhere else? Has it only been Costa Rica and the U.S. for you? Um, I lived in Ecuador, but for a short period of time, it was a about um, three months. So it was just really travels. But I do, we're... Uh, my wife and I are moving to South America in July, and we're going to be living um, a few months in each country, in Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, and then we're going to do a year in Peru. Like, we're we're going to be international residents. Um, we're too young to settle down at this point in our life, and I want to learn a lot about different countries and what they have to offer. Um, so we're we're... We're going to be explorers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sounds sounds like a great adventure. Do you have any thoughts about best places to be an expat? I, I of course we know that your experience and maybe your bias is toward Costa Rica, but you know your company is publishing books about a lot of other areas. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a one best for all. I think that's too broad a statement. I think that that's going to vary uh, depending on your language skill on your income, on your comfort level, your climate, you know, uh, that you desire. I just don't think there's one. Um, I do think that my, I like Costa Rica because I feel safe here. And I know that's big for a lot of people. I like Ecuador quite a bit in um, like Cotacachi in the mountain areas. I feel safe there as well. But in the cost of living is cheap. But, you know, there's certain customs that were different there that I I, you know, enjoy Costa Rica's customs more, you know, the, the atmosphere, they're a little bit more relaxed than the Ecuadorians, in my personal opinion. And that, those vibes that you get, the easiest way to describe it, right, vibes, um, are going to vary greatly person to person. So it depends where you put your value, whether it's in uh, cost of living, climate, political activity, or stability. Um, it, it's, I don't think it's fair to 
to just give you my opinion, and that should be, you know, everyone else's opinion as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, honest answer. Hey, I want to ask you about some of the gadgets you have on your website. By the way, I love this, some of your picks. I have the uh, floating um, sort of wristband for my phone case, uh -huh. and, and that's great. I just purchased, just yesterday actually, a Wi-Fi signal booster, and I bought, mm -hmm. for lack of a better idea, the C Crane one, about a hundred hundred and fourteen dollars I think on Amazon. You have mm -hmm. another one here and this is one of the things I've really noticed when when traveling as I mentioned uh, before we started I've been to 71 countries now and if you could just get you know your Wi-Fi to receive uh, further you know from a further distance mm -hmm. maybe you could pick up a better Wi-Fi or, or a free one or something and just sort of camp on someone's for you know the five minutes that you need it real quickly to do do a couple of downloads any recommendations there yeah absolutely I love boosters Costa Rica uh, and every other country whether you're in a, a dorm room a hotel you the Wi-Fi is at the pool your room's too far away or here in Costa Rica all the constructions made with cement walls so the you know the signal just does not get as far as it gets in the states so I use a booster I carry one with me everywhere I travel and that almond one is the one I have online it's 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 a great performer it works with any type of router so whether your initial router is you know a no matter what brand it is the almond will boost that signal um, the one I used before the almond was Airport Express I mentioned before I'm an Apple geek so I have all the Apple gadgets and unfortunately the Airport Express um, only boosts the signal if it's an Apple router so that only you know that's too limiting for us travelers so this almond really really helps with that signal now it, of course it's not going to change change the actual you know bandwidth that you're getting out of the out of the cable modem but if you just need that extra reach to your hotel room to your house to you know steal you know wi-fi from your neighbor if it's unprotected what have you but, uh, but really wait, let, me, let, me, let me let me just ask a question here are you talking about plugging this in to your router to boost the output signal or does it help you receive more because i'm only talking about the receiving end of wi-fi you know you've got your laptop mm -hmm. you you your wi-fi can receive signals from such a certain distance but can you put up a bigger antenna to receive more that's that's what i want to do yes and i think that's what we yes we need it to does do. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What you can do is let's say um, your hotel room is uh, 500 feet from the pool and that's where the signal is. You can plug it into your outlet closest to the pool in your room. And if it will, if it's, if it reaches the signal, if it can detect it, it will almost act as a repeater and will strengthen and will repeat that signal so that you will have now five bars instead of one so that you have full strength of that signal. Does that make sense? Yeah, fantastic. That's, uh, that's it is a, that's it's a, wonderful. That's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Other gadgets that you like? Well, because I carry an iPhone, I absolutely love the LifeProof case. Um, I I snorkel with my iPhone. I've actually taken film under a waterfall with it. Um, and that's I just with the LifeProof case, not with a yeah, another pouch. Just. That's correct. Just wow. the case in itself. You have to make sure it has like seven, 16 points of snapping. So you have to make sure it's really closed. And then um, it's uh, remarkable because I take walks on the beach and during the wet season, we have torrential downpours, no warning. Before people used to carry Ziploc bags in their pocket for their phones. And now, now I just absolutely have no concern for it whatsoever. You know, if I'm sweating a lot and it's getting on the phone, it doesn't matter. I mean, and it's, I've dropped it, I mean, a million times and it never, it's, it's, let's see, dust proof, you know, freeze proof, waterproof, and shock proof. My father-in-law dropped his iPhone from a zip line that was like 150 feet in the air. And miraculously, he found it later. I don't know how in the world he did that, but he found it. And the case was, was toast, but his iPhone was completely undamaged. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah, it sure is. It sure is. What, what about the SIM, the iPhone SIM cutter? So I, I assume you have either a jailbroken iPhone or an unlocked iPhone, which, whichever way you want to do it. What does the SIM cutter do? Okay, so lots of countries um, have, you know, obviously you go to the, to the different provider and you ask for a SIM card, a prepaid SIM or a chip, depending on what they call it. You can and, just drop um, in your phone. 
you just drop in your phone. Now, iPhones have special size SIM cards. They have a nano size or a micro size. They're not the usual ones that go for the, you know, the cheaper phones are full size SIM cards. Well, some of these providers don't have pre-cut SIMs. So all of the SIM cards have the same size portion that actually does the work, the little gold spot in the back. Um, the only difference between the cards that go in an iPhone and the card that goes in, let's say, I don't know, a Galaxy is it's trimmed on the outside. Some of the border is not being used and they just trim it, they cut it. And in some of these countries, they don't have the pre-cut SIMs and it's really a pain in the butt to try to cut by hand. So the SIM cutter is very small and portable. And whenever you go to a place, you don't have to be concerned with finding the correct size SIM. You just pop it in the cutter and it either cuts it for the size for an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4. And so it's just a little bit of peace of mind that you can get a chip wherever you go and find the one that fits because they don't often have it. And, and, and so, but you, you have to have an unlocked or jailbroken phone to make the SIM card work. Work, right? Uh, yes, and um, I ever since they changed the laws in the states about how to um, about what carriers can do and, and how they need to unlock the phones, you don't have to jailbreak as often unless you're a hacker that wants all the other programming abilities. Nowadays, all you have to do, as long as you're outside of your contract um, and you have the phone paid off in full, is contact the provider and ask them to unlock it. Say you're traveling, and they'll give you an unlock code. Um, they also have services on eBay that will do that for you as well for like $10. It's really quite easy these days. Uh -huh. Oh, that's great. Because you know what I just thought of? I have you know, an iPhone 5, and it's not jailbroken. However, I have four old iPhones that I actually still use around my house as remote controls and iPod touches. And you know, I could just bring one of those, bring your SIM card cutter along, and pop a SIM in there, and I've got all my data and everything, if I, you know, as long as I've synced the phone. And I got a fully functional phone. You know? Absolutely. I mean, that's a great way to do it, not have to worry about your primary phone. Right, right. Yeah, fantastic. Good, good advice. Good, good gadgets. Everybody can use these things and use <laughs> these ideas instantly. That's great. One last one I want to ask you about before you go is the bionic flip-flop. <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> what, what, that, that, that gets four and a half stars on Amazon with 276 reviews. What does this flip-flop do? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I, man, everyone here runs through flip-flops like crazy because that's all they wear every day. The humidity and the sand and it's just the environment, it destroys things. And most people go through flip-flops like two, two pairs a year. This pair I've had for two years, it's unscathed. It's still great. I can, I can do anything in them. Um, I've hiked, I've hiked uh, up high hills, uh, you know, hours in them just because I didn't have shoes at the time. I thought, hey, I'll just take these. If it works, it works, you know, and um, they just, I, I can't tell you how many people I've seen the little, um, the part that goes between your toe and your, in your other, well, your big toe and your other toes always pull out or a hole, you know, in the bottom or, I mean, there's so many ways for them to break, and this, this pair just does, will not stop. So what you're talking about is durability. There's not a certain comfort aspect or something to it, is there? Well, because of the durability and the material, you actually do break in. It takes a while to break in. That's the hardest part, the first week. Uh, but once you break it in, uh, you, you, your foot does make a form, and there's actually quite a bit of arch support. But as far as a big cushion change, like a, like a shock absorber, not as much. But you will have almost like a built-in orthotic once you're done because of the shape of your foot and the way your weight displaces the material. Hmm, that's great. That's great. Well, good. Good stuff. Well, we talked about some gadgets. We talked about some tips. You know, any other tips or uh, things you'd like to tell people before you go? I usually tell people to make sure enjoy the experience. Um, Costa Rica is going to stay exactly how it is or it's going to move at its own pace. And if you're frustrated with that, that just really doesn't help your experience. If you can enjoy it for exactly what it is today, um, you will be so much happier uh, throughout your experience in Costa Rica or any other country just Every country has gyms and things to show you and lessons about life to teach you. So just experience those and the things that you don't care for as much. Just go with the flow and, um, and you'll have a much better time than fighting everything that's different than what you're accustomed to. Well, Shannon, Annette, thank you so much for joining us today. The website is becominganexpat.com. That's becoming, the word an, A-N, expat.com, becominganexpat.com. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.
This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.